Hence, me not go gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry.
And I don't believe you will pass you by if you're calling on his name. Amen. Because the Lord wants us to call on the name. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run it in and they are saved. So we praise and thank God for another day's journey. And as James says in his epistle, count it all joy when we fall or we go into diverse temptations. And the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And we certainly do thank God for you all being here today and those that are joining us on Facebook Live. We certainly do praise God. And we certainly do give honor to whom honor is due uh, in, and their people in their respective places. And as we begin to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be promoted uh, throughout the world, not just the gospel, but the kingdom of the gospel of Jesus Christ may be promoted throughout the world. That people may hear and receive and get saved. Amen. And as we uh, are going into our prayer, we certainly want to remember all bereaved families. And we thank God for Sister Charlene being back in our midst, going through her surgery, coming out more than a conqueror. Amen. Looking good. Amen. We thank God for Wanda. Amen. Bring her here on today. Amen. And what, Wanda, you're welcome here at Christian Ministries. Amen. We certainly do thank God for. Uh, Queen Davis being here on our midst. Now your name going out throughout the ages. God delivered her. Amen. Watched over and protected her uh, from a horrible car accident. Amen. And we certainly do praise God and we rejoice. The Bible tells us to rejoice with them that rejoice. And we certainly do rejoice. And we also want to pray for any bereaved families that the Lord will comfort them in their hour of need. And I'm remembering Sister Toka and lost her sister. And let us pray for her and her family that uh, God will continue to comfort them. All right. And having said that, let us pray also for our Bible study on tonight. So let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we pray earnestly and sincerely for all prayer requests that has been made known to you and any unspoken requests. Lord, we ask you to continue to show forth your hand, show forth your anointing, and save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding concerning our Bible study on tonight. Help us to receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls. And we pray, Lord, that you will accomplish every purpose and every desire that you have for us, even on this day. And Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you thanks. We magnify your holy name. And we pray, Lord, all these prayers in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Let all say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We certainly uh, thank God for this opportunity uh, once again. I don't count it as a light thing uh, to stand before you. And I don't count it as a light thing as we endeavor into the Word of God. Uh, the Word is quick and it's powerful, the Bible says, and is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. So we want you to turn with us on today um, to the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, uh, the book of wisdom. Amen. Proverbs uh, chapter number one. And as we begin our new series uh, on this uh, particular day, I like to uh, teach in series because uh, the reason why I want to do that is it allows us to gain information. People learn through repetitiveness, uh, repeat. Amen. And as we uh, repeat information, it gives you an opportunity uh, to connect the dots. It gives you an opportunity to uh, receive of God's word that uh, ultimately you would apply it. 
That's the purpose of Bible study. That's the purpose of instruction and correction, that we might apply God's word to our everyday life uh, so that we could uh, be successful, if you uh, lack of a better word. God wants you to be successful. And you should want yourself to be successful. Amen. I never uh, ran across anyone whose true desire was to fail. And as we uh, begin our Bible study and our, our, our lessons on today, um, it would be entitled The School of Wisdom. Amen. The School of Wisdom. So this is our School of Wisdom series. And um, I want to begin to ask you a question as we begin our Bible study. I want you to think about it. Um, what do you believe is the purpose of life? Amen. I want you to ponder that just for a moment. What do you believe would be the purpose of life? And those that of you that are taking notes, um, write that down. Write, write what you believe would be the purpose of life purpose of life. And um, I'm going to throw out what I'm thinking, and I'm sure that what I'm thinking will connect with what you're thinking. Amen. And what our purpose of life is. What our purpose of life. Uh, the first thing I wrote down um, when I pondered that question, the purpose of life I put down is to serve God to serve God. I'm sure that some of you wrote that down. Amen. That, that, know that, that your purpose is to serve God. And then I wrote down the second purpose of life. And um, I wrote down to serve each other. To serve each other. And uh, what I initially said was to serve man. But um, people may misconstrue that uh, when I say that but to serve each other. And uh, as I wrote those two things down, the scripture hit me about when Jesus was asked, what is the first and the second greatest commandment? And the first and second greatest commandment, the first is, is to serve and to honor God. And the second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And those two go hand in hand. And the third thing, that uh, the Lord dropped in my mind about the purpose of life. God, God truly wants us to enjoy life. God wants you to enjoy life. And that connects with the scripture, that connects with the scripture out of uh, 3 John, 3 John chapter number 1 and verse number 2. And he was talking to Gaius, uh, who was a fellow servant, and he said to him that I would that thou prosper even as thy soul prosper. And, and in it, he was saying that above all else, above all else, uh, my greatest desire for you is to prosper, which means to enjoy life. And in order to enjoy life, in order to serve God, in order to serve one another, you must have and keep the commands of God. And in order to enjoy life, in order to serve God, in order to uh, 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 serve one another, you must have wisdom. You must have wisdom. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. How to accomplish those things and to enjoy life and to serve God and to serve one another. And uh, as we begin then to look at uh, Proverbs, it's essential, Proverbs uh, chapter number one. And verse number one says, the proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And Solomon, he wrote um, probably 95% of the Proverbs. And uh, if, if you understand the life of Solomon, that how he himself prayed to God when God had visited him, he had prayed to God, Lord, I want to know how to go in and out 
before your people. And that thing pleased God so much. His prayer pleased God so much. And God said, I'm not only going to bless you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but I'm also going to make you the richest man that had ever lived at that time. Uh, that thing pleased God. And so Solomon had literally given himself over to know and to understand. Uh, and he wrote uh, the majority of the book of Proverbs, the things that God had given unto him. So as we begin to see then in the book of Proverbs, the second verse says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give uh, sublimity to the simple, uh, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Now, I want to focus on those first, uh, verse number two, verse number three, and, uh, well, primarily verses number two and three. Uh, when the scripture says to know, then it says in uh, that, uh, that second verse, it says to know, I want you to write this down, to know, and then underneath it write down to perceive, and then write down to receive. To know, then underneath it write down to perceive, and then underneath it write down to receive. And the reason why I had you to write those down is I want you to see something, that those uh, three abilities is how we learn. Those three abilities is how we learn. If you're going to learn something, you've got to know it. If you're going to learn something, you have to perceive it. And to learn something, you have to receive it. Amen? Now, let me explain that just for a moment. To know, write this down next to to know. To know means to obtain knowledge. A knowledge of a thing. If you're gonna, if you're gonna essentially have wisdom, our goal is to get wisdom. Amen? To get wisdom to live life successfully. And in order to do that, you first have to know some things. You don't want to be ever learning and never knowing nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You want to know some things. You want to have some knowledge. And our knowledge primarily comes through study. God's knowledge, the knowledge that God wants to impart to you, primarily comes through study. A lazy person who doesn't read won't obtain and know God. Let me say that again. I know that's a pretty harsh statement right there. But, but it's true. Because that's why he's given you the Bible. That's why he's given you his word. God given, has given you his word so that you can know his thoughts. God's thoughts are literally his word. And if you're going to be led by the Spirit of God. God leads you by His Spirit through His Word. In other words, when you read and study the Word of God and you are trying to serve God, the Spirit of God is going to bring back the Word to your heart, which sounds like your voice. Well, and, and then, then that, when that Word comes back to your heart, God expects you to obey. But if you don't have the word in you, you give the spirit of God nothing to work with. Wow, that's deep. That's why he wants you to study. Huh? To show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? So that to know means to obtain knowledge, and we primarily obtain that knowledge through the study of the Word of God. He said, Thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. 
How shall a young man cleanse his way? Uh, by taking heed thereto according to thy what? Word. Amen? Now, to proceed, to proceed, literally means that come, that literally means understanding. It literally means understanding. And it, it, it comes from a, a concept of really being aware, conscious of something. Amen? Being aware of something and conscious to, to realize it or to understand it so that it has the ability to direct your actions. It, it Perceive means to bring about understanding. Amen? To bring about understanding, you perceive it, which means you come to an understanding so that it can direct your actions. Amen? You become aware of it. You become conscious of it. Uh, when, when I had uh, I remember uh, explicitly uh, when I, the Lord had first saved me and I was in Bible study. The bishop was teaching and, and the, the concepts and the word of God, because I never really have, had been taught God's word. I, I was attending uh, church sporadically, you know, off and on, here and there, but never really sat under Bible study to be taught. And uh, uh, in order to practice something, in order to do something, you have to become aware. Amen? You have to become aware of it. And, and you know, you travel, we travel through life trying to be a husband, trying to be a wife, trying to be a friend, but never really understanding or perceiving or being aware of how to be a true friend. A true husband. Amen? Uh, a, a lot of people live life without being aware of how to do it correctly. If you're going to uh, uh, pursue after God and live for God, you want to do it correctly, don't you? You don't want to hit and miss. Uh, a lot of people pray, but really not knowing how to pray, the skill of praying, the wisdom of praying. James teaches us that we often pray amiss uh, so that we can consume it upon our own lust. That's how he says. It's like an arrow being shot. If you don't pray the correct way, you always miss the mark. So once you become aware of how to pray the correct way, you should pray the correct way. That's the purpose of perceiving. That's the purpose of understanding. So that, so that brings us to our next point, receiving. 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 And receiving means, receiving means accepting what is being taught. You have to accept God's word. You have to accept God's word. Let me say that again. You have to accept God's word. And, and the, 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 how can I say it? The uh, evidence of you accepting the, God, the word of God, it means that you practice it. You put it into action. You make the necessary corrections so that, so that you can do what God's word has said. Receiving God's word means that if you're going in the wrong way, you turn, which means repent, and go in the right way. Amen? Amen? And you do this for what reason? To serve God, to serve each other, and to live a good life. Amen? Y'all with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's see. Uh, uh. We're going to be skipping down. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to follow all this in, in, in order, so to speak, but I'm going to go in order of my Bible study. <laughs> so, so uh, the primary ways that we learn is through knowing. We come to a knowledge of it. Amen? 
And we primarily get that knowledge how? How do we get that knowledge? Through study. Through study. That's key. Study. Through study. Study is a systematic approach to, to knowing the word of God. You just don't open the Bible and say, oh, boom. I'm going to read this. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That, that's not study. <laughs> study is if you got an issue, you got an issue with lying. You search the scriptures on how to overcome lying. If you got an issue or you want to know how to give, you search the scriptures on giving. You want to increase your love. You search the scriptures on love. Amen? That's study. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, I, I suggest to you, this is my suggestion, and, and it comes highly recommended by the Lord. Whatever issue you have in your life, or whatever you're going through, that's what you should be studying. Uh, so that you can apply that word to be an overcomer. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. That's that's what study is, so that you can gain that knowledge, amen? And then once you gain the knowledge, then you move to uh, perceiving, which means to understand, amen? To understand it, to, to become aware of it, conscious of it, so that you can apply it. Your purpose for studying the Word of God and receiving the word of God is so you can apply God's word. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, notice, then, receiving means that you accept what's been taught. You accept God's truth. Amen? You accept it. Hallelujah. You receive it. You accept it. That's what receiving is, so that, so that, so that you can apply it. Hallelujah, my God. Now, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Y'all ready for me to move on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Drop down then to uh, verse number seven. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said you forgot verse five. <laughs> uh, verse number five. Notice what it says. A wise man will what? Hear and what? Increase learning and a man of understanding will attain unto what? Wise counsel. That's the goal. That you, that's, that's your goal, is to uh, 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 be a wise man or woman. Amen? And wisdom, I want you to write this down. Wisdom, this is wisdom here. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the ability to, to, to apply what you know and understand to overcome life's problems. That's wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know and understand, amen, so that you can overcome life's problems. Wisdom in the Bible is, is a skill, a skill that is learned. Like, like uh, I'm going to give Pineapple Eddie, Pineapple Eddie a shout out. I hope they give me a, send me a coupon. <laughs> we went, my wife and I went to Pineapple Eddie Friday. And my goodness, that food was scrump delicious. <laughs> I don't know last time I used that word, <laughs> but it was good. Amen? And you can tell, I'm, on, I'm being honest, you can tell that food was cooked with wisdom. Uh, that person or that chef, he knew uh, what, what he was working with. He knew what he was doing when that food came out. We had about three courses, amen? The appetizer, uh, we had two courses, I'm sorry. 
We had the appetizer and then the main meal. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and all of it, even the cornbread was good. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 uh. We, had, we had an appetizer that was, uh, I never had it before. It was, it was, it was catfish. I love catfish. And he, and he cut it up into little pieces where, you know, little, little chunks where you can eat it like an appetizer or something like nuggets. And, and it was cooked to perfection. I literally, it was cooked to perfection. And then the, 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 the I tried, she had a main meal of, of shrimp. And I love shrimp. And, and uh, the outside was, 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 was crisp. And the inside was 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 juicy. <laughs> my God, my God! And that that individual has some skill. He knew. And and my meal, my whole meal. I, I was into her meal. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And I was eating my meal as well. And it was every the rice. I had some rice and fish, and it was good. Huh? Everything was good. I, I told them, I told them that we was, I said, even the water, <laughs> my God, was good. Thank you, Lord. Skill. That was skill. And, 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 and how he did it, uh, um, he did it with skill. He knew how to put it together. Amen? Knew how to put it together. And that's how God wants us to live our life. He wants us to live our life skillfully. And God is the chef, if you allow me to say it. He knows how, amen, to put it together so that you can live your life successfully. Amen? Prosperously. Thank you, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. I'm not a naming and claiming preacher. But I believe that we can live above uh, circumstances. We can live above trouble and tribulation. Not allowing that stuff to take us down. Amen? But to build us up. Uh, I believe that Jesus is for us. And the Bible says if God be for us, uh, who then can be what? Against us. Hallelujah. I believe God's word when it says we are more than conquerors. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is that ability that is gained through knowledge to overcome any of life's problems. Think about it. I want y'all to think about this just for a moment. That who knows life better than God? Huh? Who knows life better than him? He already declared the end from the beginning. Huh? The Bible tells us that he's omnipresent. He's om omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. And, and he's omnipotent. Amen? Which means that he's all-powerful. You follow me? I was, I was, I was, I, what was I at? I can't think. I never was at a funeral. I was at a funeral and I was listening to the man preach and he preached uh, 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 about Kairos and, and he was breaking that thing down about Kairos and Kronos and I'm sitting there gaining that wisdom and knowledge and, and, and Kairos simply is God's time, amen? And God works out of uh, 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 our time which is Kronos so we operate in chronological time, but God works in chrono, uh, uh, Kairos, which is his time. Amen? And, 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 and I love it. He said, you know, we, uh, he may not come when he born, when we want him, but he's what? Always what? Right on time. With God, if you walk with God, you can be a day late and a dollar short and still be on time. Uh, that's God. Hallelujah. And, and, and the Bible talks about Jesus and he's saying that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Of the beginning and the end of our faith. So, so 
Uh, if God is putting out his word in such a way for us to obtain it and to receive it, I thought we take the opportunity to take it and receive it and live by it. I thought we to make it a priority. Jesus taught, my God, Jesus taught, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. Then he said, all these other things shall be added unto you. And he was saying that so that we would not misconstrue what the priority is. The priority is putting the Lord first. Am I right? If we put him first, how do you put him first? You keep his commandments. You do his will. You walk in his ways. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, let me move on. God, hallelujah. I almost got lost. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice. Verse number five. He says, a wise man will what? Will hear. That word hear means uh, to listen with the intent to obey. God is always speaking. But not everybody is hearing. To hear means that you're listening with the intent to obey. It's like uh, back when I was coming up, they used to say, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Amen? When the Lord speaks, everybody should be what? Listening. God doesn't uh, uh, visit and talk to you about how's the weather. What it look like. Uh, God doesn't come to you and gossip. Huh? When he comes to speak to you, he's coming to speak to you for a purpose. For a reason. Amen? So, you, so a wise person is one that wants to be skillfully skilled at living life and living it successfully, they will hear. Amen? With the intent to obey. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to rap. Now, Lord, listen. Listen. He says, A wise man will hear, increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Amen? Now, drop down then to verse number seven. The verse number seven. Verse number seven is the key to all of Proverbs. Verse number seven is the key to obtaining all wisdom. Verse number seven is, is the door. Hallelujah. Now notice. Notice what he said. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise instruction. Notice what he said. He said, ah, yeah, my God, hold on for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Um, need to bring out another point before we actually go there. Amen? I want you to go with me uh, to the book of, uh, well, stay there with the book of Proverbs, but just go over to the second chapter. Proverbs number two and verse number six. And what I'm going to show you out of there is, because this Bible cause builds, it builds. That's why I got I to stick to order, because it builds. Proverbs two and six, it gives you some knowledge. It lets you know that the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. You need to write that down. You need to know that. That, that all, all good knowledge, all knowledge worth knowing. <laughs> I'm getting excited. 
Everything that's worth knowing, huh, it comes from God. Verse 6, for the Lord, he's the one that gives wisdom. Do you want to know how to live life skillfully and successfully? You want to know how to please God? You want to know how to serve your brother and sister? You want to know how to love yourself? You need the wisdom that comes from God. And that comes from God. Note, uh, uh, for the Lord, he giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Out of the mouth of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Who gives it? The Lord. the Lord. Amen. That which you need to live life successfully. Now, go with me here to the book of St. James. The book of St. James. Chapter number one. We have a say amen. All right, chapter number one. And drop down with me to verse number seven. I'm sorry, not number seven. James chapter number one and verse number five. Let's read it together. What does it say? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to every man or to man liberally, upbraideth not, and it shall be what? Given unto who? Him. Amen? If you lack wisdom in any area of your life, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be successful. God, God doesn't want you to be overcome by anything. Because you being overcome by anything is a reflection on him. Let that sink in. You being successful is a reflection on him. Notice, he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to any man liberally. Now, to ask means to pray. A wise person will pray. A wise person will have a prayer life that's praying instant, in season and out of season. Huh? Praying always with prayer and supplication. Prayer is necessary so that God can speak to you and transform your mind. The Bible says, be not conformed, but be what? Amen. By the what? Renew. That's what God's word does. It renews your mind. It heals your oppression. It heals your guilt. It heals your shame. It emboldens you. It gives you courage. It gives you strength. It allows you to have faith, to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus said that he took the bold statement and said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The word of God cleanses you. It purifies you. It sanctifies you. It builds you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? Thank you, Lord. It's good medicine to the soul. Hallelujah. My God. Now, notice. He says, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally. Meaning that God just doesn't put a portion on your plate. He, 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 like Psalms, the 23rd Psalms, the Bible says, uh, your, your cup runneth over. God will anoint you in this word so that your cup will run over. My God, he fills you up. Sometimes I get 
so much into the word and into prayer, being praised and worship, I feel like I'm going to bust. <laughs> God expands and gets big. Huh? When you're praising and worshiping God, you've been in this word, it expands, it gets big. Uh -huh. you, 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 you expand, your mind expands, it gets big. Uh, so much joy, so much peace. Hallelujah. Just by fellowshipping with the Lord. Just by, just so much joy and peace by dwelling with the Lord. Communing with Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice what He says. Gives it to every man liberally and afraid of not means that the Lord does not get upset with you when you ask Him for wisdom. If you do not know, you should go to God. Go to him in prayer. Amen. God does not want you to be ignorant. And Paul said it himself. We would have you not be ignorant, brethren. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But God does not want you to be ignorant. Oh, but God wants you to be wise. God wants you to be strong. God wants you to be mighty. Amen. Why? Because that's his attribute. He's strong. He's mighty. Hallelujah. He's wise. My God. Now notice. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. I pray to God and it shall be given him. Now notice. Given him. Drop in down to uh, verse 17. Notice this. I want you to get this. Hallelujah. Put this in your heart. This is knowledge. <laughs> verse 17. James Chapter number 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? Above. Above. And coming down from who? Above. The Father of life, with whom there is no what? Variableness or shadow of turning. Amen? Thank you, Lord. There's no, there's no wishy-washiness about God. And we should have read, when we read verse number 5, we should have read right under it, where if you're going to ask God for wisdom, he said, let him ask of faith, nothing wavering. Don't come to God doubting. Amen? Hallelujah. This is good stuff. Amen. So, so, so we've established then that if you want to know wisdom and knowledge or an understanding, it comes from God. Amen? And in order to get it, you have to go to God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And that means you got to pray. That means you got to study His Word. And then when you pray and study the Word of God, you receive knowledge. Amen? You're receiving knowledge. And then uh, God knows how to connect the dots, which is understanding. Huh? And then as you further receive, you apply it. If, I, if I'm weak, I'm weak because I haven't gone through that process. <laughs> if I'm strong, I'm strong because I have gone through that process. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, uh, in the church, uh, uh, me also being a pastor and you also being parishioners, you probably have recognized this yourself. You see people that come into the church, some uh, grow faster than others. Some have been in the church for 30, 40 years when they testify, but you see a lot of cracks. You see a lot of weakness. And the reason why that is, is because of application. Those that come into the household of God and apply God's word, they grow. It's not about how long you've been over here. It's about what you've been applying since you've been over here. What you've been doing. And then you see spiritual giants. Those spiritual giants are those that have been applying God's word down through the years. Hallelujah. I see why Joshua said, choose you this day. Whom you going to serve? He said, as for me and my house, I'm going to do what? Serve the Lord. That's the choice we've got to make. Hey, Lord. 
If I want to grow in the Lord and in the power of his might, I got to choose him. And I got to choose him every day. I got to choose him every moment of the day. Hallelujah. I got to choose him every second of the day. In other words, I should get to a point where it's not an option. Huh? Uh, me serving God is not an option. I'm already ruled out. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hell. I've already ruled out that I'm, I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. Uh, I've got to serve the Lord. I've, all, I've already made the choice that I'm not going to let nothing separate me. I'm from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I've, I've already made up my mind. Is your mind made up and your heart fit? you got to make up your mind. Hallelujah. My God. Y'all with me today? Thank you. You know what? Uh, uh, I'm so persuaded by this thing. You've got to become so persuaded by this thing that if you come to a bridge, your mind is already made up that I'm going to cross that bridge. It doesn't matter. I'll be like I say, if I perish, I perish. Huh? I, I got to, I got to, got to, got to huh? see the king. And if I perish, I believe that he's, he's able to raise me up. That's, that's the way Abraham was when he got ready to offer up Isaac, huh? his only begotten son. He believed that if God, if you want me to slay him, I believe that you are able to raise him up again. Huh? So, so it was a no-brainer for him. It was a win-win for him because he knew that God was able. Huh? When you are doing God's will, it should be a no-brainer that whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, you are winner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what Paul looked at. Huh? He said, whether to live is gain, whether to die is gain. It's a win-win situation. Hey, hallelujah, because our God, he's able. I said, our God is able. I said, our God is able. I said, our God is able. He's able to save us. He's able to deliver us. He's able to strengthen us. Huh? The joy that we have, huh? it's not because of me. It's not because of you. The joy that you have is because of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God is our strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to fight your battles. Be armed with that wisdom. Be armed with that knowledge. Be armed with that understanding. That on, come on and give the Lord a praise. That kind of shot. Just declare it in the atmosphere that no weapon formed against you. It shall prosper. Just declare it in the atmosphere that you are the head and not the tail. Just declare it in the atmosphere that I am healed, I'm set free, and I'm delivered. That kind of shot. Just declare it in the atmosphere that if God be for us, who then can be against us? You want to declare it. You want to open up your mouth and give your God praise. That kind of a Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've come too far by faith. Hey, leaning on the Lord. Come too far trusting uh, in his holy name. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, the last time I checked, he never failed. Hey, last time I checked, he never lost the battle. Hey, shut up. Hey, glory. Last time I checked, he's still king and he's sitting on the throne. High and lifted up. That kind of a shot. Hallelujah. When the 24 elders are crying out, he's holy. Hey, hallelujah. He's holy. I said he's holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if I'm going to receive anything, I'm going to receive it from the Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. If I'm going to boast in anything,
anything, I'm going to boast in the Lord. Uh, yeah, if I'm going to trust in anybody, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to acknowledge him. Uh, and all we should acknowledge the Lord because he knows. Uh, acknowledge him in what? All our ways. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that's what God wants. Uh, he don't want half of you. He don't want a part of you. Uh, sometimes we serve God compartmentalized. That means that I, I, I give him this portion and I keep this portion for myself. You won't get anywhere with God like that. Hey, you got to give God your all. All your strength. All your might. God wants all of your worship. Hallelujah. I see why Paul said, I got to move on. I see why he said, in him I live. In him I move. In him we have our being. That has to be your testimony. In him you're living. Hey, and you shall never die. In him you move and you shall not give up. Huh? In him you shall have your being. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. We went somewhere. Hey, did y'all travel with me? Did we go somewhere? Hey, hallelujah. I think we went to that third heaven. That kind of old Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord has spoken to our hearts. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's because we've been in this word. Ah, that's because we've been touching the hem of his garment. That's because we got faith in what we're receiving. Hallelujah. That's because we're talking about him and he changes the atmosphere. Hallelujah. When you lift up the name of Jesus, even in your home, you change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. You're an atmosphere changer. Yeah, hallelujah. My God. My God. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to the Bible step. Hey, Shalalabasha. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Mm, thank you, Lord. Yoke's been destroyed. Hallelujah. Glory. My God. Hallelujah, my God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, so, let's go back over. Then, let me make sure I got everything out of that. Um, every, verse 17, James 1, 17, it says, every good gift <laughs> and perfect gift is from where? Above. That's why he said, set your affections on things Above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. That's why he said, grace and peace is multiplied unto you in the book of Peter. Huh? Through the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? If you want grace, if you want peace, you get more knowledge of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. Every good gift comes from where? Above and coming down from the Father of Lights. And that Father of Lights, it's, it's equating to He's the Enlightenment. Amen. He lights your path. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. Uh, notice what He said With whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Now, let's go back over then now. Having said that, let's go back over to Proverbs. Chapter number two, uh, number one, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter number one. I'm so glad I obeyed God and went back. Amen. Sometimes uh, I heard a sermon that was preached, Rediscovering Jesus. And he used that uh, sermon where uh, Joseph and Mary left him in Jerusalem and they had to go back. Sometimes you got to go back. To go forward. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So we see here, Proverbs then, uh, chapter number one, and verse number seven. And Proverbs one and seven is the glue, is the hinge, is the key to wisdom. 
Notice what he says. Notice what he says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. A fool is a simple-minded person. A simple-minded person. That's what a fool is. A simple-minded person that don't really know, want to know deep things. They don't care to know it. They don't care to process it. They don't care to live by it. And, and they, they live life as, I'll say, a butterfly. Just going from place to place, seemingly no purpose, directing you. Man, that's a fool. You don't want to be a fool. A fool, the Bible says, have said in his heart that God does not exist. And because they have said that in their heart, the Bible says that they are corrupt. They are evil. Amen? That's a fool. I'm reminded of Jiminy Cricket. He said, I'm no fool. No serene. <laughs> I want to live to be 103. I stay safe for you and me because I'm no fool. Amen? We don't want to be no fool. Amen? So notice what he says. Verse number seven. The fear of the Lord. You need to underline that. The fear of the Lord, it, it literally means awe, to be at awe, to reverence. It really means to, to love and to trust God. To be at awe, to reverence, to love, and to trust God. Amen? That's the fear of the Lord. Fear the Lord um, says, um, fear the Lord, notice what it says, is the beginning of knowledge. Meaning that that fear of the Lord is the base foundation. You won't get anything from God that's worth something unless you be at all at him. Unless you reverence him. Unless you love him and commit your total life to him. Some people stay on the fence. Some people are all in. Jesus said this in the book of Revelations. He said that I would that you were hot or cold, but you're lukewarm, I'm going to do what? Spew you out. Can't straddle the fence. You either in or you're out. <laughs> There's a song that says, I'm all in. And that's, that's the reframe part of that song. I'm all in. Thank you. And I'm all in. Are you all in? I know you all in. You're here tonight. Oh, you all in. And you reverence God. That means then, if you're going to receive of God, God doesn't waste his time. Amen? And God knows your heart. Doesn't it? And, and, and God will apply his word to your heart and he'll give you a little bit. He'll see what you're going to do with a little bit before you get more. Amen? It's like you're dealing with your children and you got your uh, five year old child and you know. You got this uh, nice car waiting for him. At five years old, you don't give him the keys. Say, here, this is, you're getting this car. They ain't ready for it. They can't handle it. So what do you do? You train them. You train them. Amen? You instruct them. You put responsibility in them. You build them up. And then when it's time to give it to them, at the proper time, you give it to them. Same way with God. God trains us. He builds us up. He instructs us. That's the next word. Instruction. Amen? Instruction. If you want to 
know God, you've got to reverence his instruction. Y'all hear me? Now notice, his instruction has to do with his warnings about his will, about life. God warns us about life, doesn't he? The reason why he warns us about life is because he wants us to be successful. You tell your children, don't touch that stove, you're going to get burned. It's hot. You're warning them. Amen? And if they disobey your warning, they touch the stove, they're going to get what? Burned. Amen? If we disobey and throw away God's warnings and we touch the stove, huh? we're going to get burned. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now notice, instruction then has to do with warnings about consequences. Consequences. There's a consequence. You smoking uh, uh, 20 packs of cigarettes, I don't know, you can't smoke that one. Not a day. <laughs> if you're smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, you end up with lung cancer. It's a what? Consequence. Now, I'm going to say something hard here. And uh, uh, some people may not receive this, what I'm about to say. But, but God says this in his word. If you despise my instruction, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. That's the word of God. In other words, God said, if you turn your head away from my instruction, when you get into trouble, I'm going to laugh at you. People don't like to teach that. People don't want to preach that. But why would God say something like that? He's saying that so that we would obey his word. So that we would put his word into practice. If I reverence God's word, I say, man, I don't want to get into calamity. I don't want to get into trouble. I want to stay out of trouble. And the way to stay out of trouble is for me to be obedient to God's word. Am I right? There's a scripture that, that, that has frequently, uh, I don't want to say bothered me, but had me always inquisitive. It's, it's what we call, it's in the Lord's Prayer. And he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I always said, Lord, why? Why I got to pray that you don't lead me into temptation? Why I got to pray that? That you don't lead me into temptation. Will God lead me into temptation? The Bible said, the Bible said that, that God don't try anybody uh, with evil. You don't tempt anybody with evil. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Y'all want to know what that means? I'm going to let y'all find that out yourself. <laughs> but, but, but God's word is there to help us. Amen? And it's our, as Proverbs would put it, it's our joy to search it out. It's our good pleasure to search it out. Amen? God loves it. In other words, he busts his buttons when you search out his word. When you try to find out about him, oh, that makes God stand up. If you allow me to say it that way. Huh? So much the more that, that Job himself was a seeker and a lover after God. God, God, God said to the devil, have you considered huh, my servant Job? God gave uh, Job a recommendation. But now that may be too deep for some of y'all to say, well, I don't want God to be recommending me to the devil. Huh? You ain't got to worry if you ain't prepared. <laughs> y'all with me? All right, let me move on, let me move on. Now, instruction is equal to 
the fear of the Lord. You receive God's warning about the consequences of bad, of bad behavior. And this also deals with correction. God corrects us. Why does God correct us? Correct us. Because he loves us. Am I right? Y'all know God loves you. So he's going to correct you. Amen? Straighten you out. Amen? All right, now. Let's look here. It says, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise what? Wisdom. Wisdom. And what? So don't hate God's wisdom. Don't hate God's instruction. Don't be a fool. Amen? God is not mine. Whatsoever a man soweth, what? That shall he. Do you believe that? Have you received that? Amen? Now notice this. Uh, and we're going to close this out. Oh, I got to That clock there and that clock there is off. Let's go over to Proverbs 4. We have to say amen. Proverbs 4 and verse number 7. I'm sorry, verse number 5. What does it say? Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall what? Preserve thee. Love her. You got to love God's wisdom. Love it. Love her. And she shall what? Keep thee. What's the next verse say? Now notice what it says. Wisdom is the principal thing. The skill or the ability to live life successfully is the principal thing. Any situation that you're in, you should be, and you want to come out of it more than a conqueror. You should be asking God for his wisdom. And get that first and that right earth. Amen? I know we got a lot of tests. I know we got a lot of trials. Therefore, we know where to go. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. And, and the word of God says that you got to esteem and reverence his wisdom. It's the principal thing, the key, the foundation. What does God say about it? Once you receive what God says about it, you do it. Amen? Now notice what he said. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get what? And then verse number 8 says, exalt her, reverence her, wisdom, what God gives you. Exalt it, lift it up, amen, value it, exalt it, and she shall do what? Promote. promote. If you receive God's word, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west, but from the throne of God. God will promote you. God will lift you up above the head of your enemy. God will do that for you if you apply his word. If you live by his word, he'll promote you. Hallelujah. Do y'all believe that? Do you believe that? People that believe that practice that. People that believe that live by that. Man shall
shall not live by, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen? And notice. Uh, uh, exalt her, and she shall promote thee, and she shall bring thee uh, to honor when thou dost embrace her. Now, just go back now to Proverbs 3. All right? We're about to close this out. We got enough time to do it. Now, thank God. Thank God for you all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What's our subject for tonight? The School of Wisdom. Thank you. Somebody wrote it down. Now, notice. This here, uh, uh, Proverbs, the, generally speaking, the outline of it is beautiful. The, the odd verses are generally God's command. The even verses in this proverb is the blessing that goes along with the command. Doesn't follow all the way through, but it follows the majority of the way. Let me say that again. That's why God gives it to you. Amen? He gives you the instruction, then he gives you the promise. God gives you the instruction, then he gives you the promise. Why? Because he wants you to live by the instruction so you can receive the promise. All God's promises are conditional. Huh? They're conditional upon all, uh, conditional upon, based upon your obedience. Whew. That's beautiful, ain't it? Hallelujah. Now, let's look, let's look, let's look. He says, look at the instruction. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my what? Amen. If you do that, here's the promise. Length of days and long life and peace shall be added unto thee. Son, here's the instruction. Let not mercy for, and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. Here's the promise. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Lord. If you do uh, verse number three, Verse number four will be your promise. Verse number five and six, they're intermingled. Notice what it says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Here's the promise. And he shall do what? Direct. Direct. If you trust God huh, and acknowledge him in all your ways, the promise is what? He's going to direct your path. God can, is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If you know these things, happy are ye. If you what? Do them. Amen? Look at verse number seven. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from me. If you do that, it shall be huh? to thy navel and I marvel of thy bones. Amen? That's the promise. God gives you the instruction, and then with every instruction, there's a promise. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's do one more. Verse uh, uh, number nine. Here's the instruction. Honor uh, the Lord with all thy substance. That means give your tithes and offering. <laughs> oh, that's a good segue. We're about to do that. <laughs> And with thy first fruit, and with the first fruit of all thy increase. And here's the promise. Huh? So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy uh, presses shall burst out with what? New wine. You're going to be blessed. If you give unto the Lord, you're going to be blessed. If you follow God's wisdom, his instruction. Huh? It's all connected to a promise. Amen? And all the promises of God are yea and amen. Thank you, Lord. If you want to be blessed, 
You got to follow his, his instruction to receive God's promise. Amen. Don't be a fool. Don't despise the instruction of the Lord. Amen. A fool, this is a fool. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to quit here. I'm done uh, for tonight. Uh, this is a fool. To think that they can do anything and live any kind of way and still be blessed by God. That's a fool, land. But I say amen. I say, That's a fool. That's a fool. Amen. Thank you. Y'all remember? I like that, uh, the old nursery rhymes. That, uh, this one here is in the nursery rhyme. It's more or less a Faith, thank you, honey, thank you. Faith of, uh, it was told about um, three, three, I guess it was pigs, if I'm not mistaken. I ain't talking about the three little pigs. But uh, there was the, the mother, she wanted them, her children, or whatever they was, the ducks or the chickens, I forget now what it was. She wanted them to go out with her and she's going to make a pie. She wanted them to go out and get the pie, uh, get the ingredients for the pie, pick the apples. She brought them to the house. She asked them to go with her. They said, hey, like, no, we, we playing. We, it's our, it's our playtime. We're not going to do that. So she said, okay, I'll go out and get it. She got them. Then she said, y'all going to help me Cut them up. He said, no, Mom, we still playing. We ain't going to help you cut them up. So she said, I'll cut them up. Then she said, y'all going to help me put them in the oven. He said, no, Mom, we still playing. We ain't going to do that. Huh? So she put them in the oven. Took them out of the oven. He said, y'all going to help me eat them? Oh, yeah, Mom, we're going to help you eat them. Oh, no, no. Y'all been playing. <laughs> Y'all been playing. Y'all gonna help me either. Amen? Now that's a fool. To think that you're gonna receive all the blessings uh, but not helping or following after the instructions. Amen? The school of wisdom. God's word is good in it. Amen. Amen. Sister Nasha, will you take up our offering? Thank you, Lord. Come on and give God a praise. You know, I like to end my Bible class on a high note. <laughs> but maybe God don't want that tonight. As far as, uh, it's a high note, ain't it? We happy. <laughs>